everyone, uh, this is the Xena video, and I'm going to be talking about bullet journaling. Uh, so I've been journaling, you know, just keep a personal journal since I was a teen. I actually still have all of them in a box. Um, and at about the beginning of this year, YouTube started showing me videos for bullet journaling. And I was like, okay, neat. What is this thing? Uh, the spreads are really, really pretty. People do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, you know, and so I started looking more and more into it. Um, and eventually I found the original guy that kind of created the system and kind of ended up sharing it with everybody. Uh, I think his name is Ryder, Ryder Carroll, I think. Um, and he's got a book on bullet journaling too. So if you're like, after this, you want more information, you want to hear more about things from his perspective, uh, by all means, go check out the book. Um, so bullet journaling for me is a really great, great way to incorporate um, your personal journal, your calendar, um, you know, all the things you're trying to keep track of at once. Maybe you're trying to track all these different habits, um, you know, your to-do lists. All of that stuff can be in one place, all right? Are you the type with like 500,000 sticky notes everywhere? You probably lost a few at some point. I know I have, okay? So you could put them all in one spot, okay? Um, so today I'm going to be going through uh, getting into a new journal. Um, usually you do this at the start of the year. Most people will do it New Year's. Um, I, however, have been using these journals that I have. Um, I think I got them like, like, I have a box of like 10 or 15 of them still. I got them free from like somebody's old work party that we're trying to get rid of them. So I've just been using them. Um, so this is my first one. Um, right here. I like this one a lot. Uh, I actually, you know, this is one that I had already used, partially started, and, and then where the sticky note is is where I started the bullet journaling officially. And that's where I put my index was right there. Um, so... Uh, this is my current book right here. It has exactly one page left, thankfully. Uh, I was going a little bit crazy there, having to be like, shit, I have to do this video, and I only have one page left. I really need to go into the new book. Um, and then this one's right here is mine. Uh, I like to know... Right. Do you want me to uh, lower it? Lower what? Do you want them to see what you're holding? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we should probably you go got, to the yeah, journal part. You gotta part. Command, command me, master. Yes, love. Alright, your other camera's on screen. Alright, um, so, uh, this is my first book. This one was a personal journal, uh, that was originally started with. I was just like, you know what, I'm not even halfway through, so I'm just gonna start here. The sticky, that's where my index starts on this book. Um, here. So, fun sticker times. Uh, so what I have open as my current book, um, and then this is the book that I'm going to. They are going to be a little bit confusing because I was like, I'm not ready to leave my my Jumino stickers behind. Uh, I do love Sturdy Valley, by the way. This this guy right here is my art. Other things are not, but uh, this one is me. Um, so here I am just going, you know, new stickers. Um, so I think the two biggest parts that bullet journaling has is one an index, okay? So the thing to know here is that there are page numbers here. Um, okay, and there's actually page numbers throughout the whole book. All right, and this is pretty powerful because you can find everything again. All right, as you're going through, you're like, hey, I have this important page of notes. Well, just go in your index and write down where you wrote them. Put the number there. Let's say you come back to that page, you know, I don't know, a month later, and you got to add to it. You start a new page, but, um, you know what? Just put a comma and add the new page numbers in. You know, you don't need to worry too much about losing things. Where have I done that? I've done that a lot, actually. Um, video ideas. I've got video ideas on 40 and 55 to 56, 66. Those pages just end up sprawled all over in my journal. Um... Uh, and then, uh, we've got, um, monthly logs, you know, 
I've done that too. I just realized something. Hmm. Three down. Um, that a pass he is so stupid. What page need to be? Was it? No, no, one? that page. Oh, yeah, I can fix that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, so I'm going to hand just that for a minute, and I'm going to go into the new book. Um, so the big part is indexing and starting with that. Um, and so if you're following along with me, you're welcome to open up your book now. Go to your first blank page, okay? These pages are weird, so it's stuck together. Um, so I usually go, you know, one in. And the first thing you're going to do is just start out writing index at the top. Most people use about two to four pages. Um, you know, kind of just depends on how big your book is. But let's say you run out of index, okay? You filled up all the pages you gave to it. You're like, all the way over here. Well, make a new index page. And give yourself a note where it's at. Um, so for me, the last book that I was doing, I was actually doing some stickering. I was making stickers. Um... And uh, I was very excited about things. So I'm just going to use some of the stickers that I made last time because I had so many misprints. So I still have a whole extra set of this stuff. So it's going to go there. Yeah, it's going to go there. Um, let's see here. There. All right, so I haven't needed to use this type of my index page, but I did make myself a note. I have a rocket book, which is a cloud connected notebook that I, you know, can take pictures and scans of and they store in my drive. Um, so I have a note for that too, just in case I run into things that are there that I need to remember are there. Um, so I've got I'm going to start my page numbers. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's those pages. Um, so the next part, we'll just get the calendar set up real quick. Um, what month are we in? We're going to have, usually do, so I usually do, I think, three on a page, if I remember right. There we go. This way I don't have to remember how to count lines. Um, and you don't have to use a ruler, but I like to. So um, we have our future log here, and this is good for whenever you find out information that is going to be way in the future, okay? So anything, you know, outside of this current month, you're going to want to put it here. Okay. Um, and that way you don't end up forgetting shit. Let's say your partner is like, hey, I took these days off. Well, this is where you put it. Uh, and I, I am starting in the middle of the year, so I will... Um, still be using I will still use all of my year sticker out because I don't know how long I'm gonna have this book for I will probably have this I will probably go to the end of this book until I run out of pages um, I don't plan on on redoing a book just because it's the end of the year um, though I certainly understand the appeal of that um, and if your books you know are larger that would make sense but this is book number three for this year so you know um, okay. Is there any questions from people or just not not yet? Okay. Please put your questions in chat if you need one. Um, either chat is welcome to ask any questions they can. We can always pause and go over those. If we go too fast, let us know.
Yeah, I don't know if this is the most exciting part of the book. Um, but it is fun going to a new book, though. So, I don't know. I like it a lot. I get to design everything. I get to pick out what colors I like using. Um, I try not to lock myself into being too consistent with, like, anything. Um, you know, just because I may not have that same colored pen, but I think the most I did in the last book was I did all my page numbers in, in, uh, in green. That was about all I did. So. All right. Um. All right, so I'm going to get my months in here. Holy crap, it's like Halloween time. It's going to be Halloween time soon. That, by the way, is my favorite holiday. I love Halloween so much. We have a question from Sin. Um, is there a particular type of book you look for, Zena? Like notebook? I assume like Just, notebook. Yeah, book oh, for okay. bullet journaling. Um, you can use whatever you want. If you have some notebook that you've like filled up halfway, you could pick up that and use it. This index process, you just start from wherever you've got like a blank page. Probably put a sticky or tell yourself where you put your index if it's in the center, though. Um, there is a lot of people who love uh, what's called dot grid. I love a dot grid, actually. Um, I'm just trying to use up what I have in my house. It's kind of, you know, my personal thing. Um, and so it has dots basically in the shape of a grid. They're kind of light. Um, but it means that it's really easy to make like charts because the dots are already there. Um, so it's like it's like graph paper light if you haven't seen it before. Um, and if you're like, fuck, I really don't want to write these page numbers, they do make an official bullet journal, bullet journal, okay, that has the page numbers already in there, and some of these pages that I'm doing right now already set up for you. Um, but it's whatever you want, though. Whatever fits in your backpack, whatever fits, you know, on your desk, um, will work for this. All right, so, all right, so I've got my future log in. Um, that is pages five through eight. So I'm gonna go back to here, okay? So these are gonna be my first couple entries in here. So my index is one, actually, but over here, one through four. Um, future log I said was five through eight. Okay, so that's kind of the basic sections, all right? This next one is where I would suggest kind of sitting down with yourself and thinking about a little bit of planning, all right? Um, because you're going to want to think about, okay, how much time can I, do I need to see at a time to feel like I kind of know what's going on in my life right now, okay? For me, that's a month. And for a lot of people, that's probably also a month. Um, but if you're like in school... I like two weeks at a time. That's all. That's all I can manage at once, really, to see, like, everything in general. Um, so it's not quite October, but I am going to set up the October page. All right, and here's the deal. It doesn't matter what I where I put the October page. It could be over here in the center if I wanted, okay? I still have some September stuff that I'm working on because it's still September for a few days. Um, 
But what matters is that I have in my index, this is where October's log is located. Okay. Um, so when I, so I'll add in my page numbers. Um, some of this is just going to get boring for a second. All right, so I like it really simple. Um, I just go one, two, all the way down the line. I just put the numbers there. And this is going to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So I'm just going to put the first letter right next to it. That way, at a glance, that's all I need to see. Um, and this helps during COVID times because there's not a whole lot anchoring me to what day of the week things are. Um. All right, so down here, this section um, is going to be where I put my to-dos for the month, so things I need to keep track of. All right, um, any tasks that I didn't get done from the last month are going to go here. Okay. Um, the other thing that I do for myself is I actually, you know, track the migraine days um, for both Jess and I in here as well. Um, and some people, you know, will set it, will track all sorts of habits with their journal. Um, and they will give those separate pages. That's cool. Um, but for me, just, you know. Um, that's all I need. You know, I just put an M in there for the days that we have them. That's about all I manage. I'm also not in a stage with migraines where I need to be tracking like, um, like different triggers. I already kind of have those mapped out. So, okay. So I think that's like, that's like the most like huge amounts of structure that like you really might want to have in your book. Um, I did help work with, um, my kid on, on their student spread, Jess, do you want to show the, uh, the weekly calendar for them? So they've got an index. This is their, um, oh, okay. Um, so yeah, so this is another example of a, of a spread to do, um, and they're going to basically do this, two of these, um, and check in about like every two weeks to kind of update things, get the new ones set up. Um, and, uh, this way they've got a way to kind of track, you know, classes, school work, appointments, all at the same time, uh, because. I'm just letting you have a question. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, just. You know, as a student, you've got to be able to balance. So we did leave some extra note sections. 
that's probably where their weekly to-do list will go. Again, they're only doing it by the week, so that should be enough space. If it's not, go on the next page. Okay, question. Do you find tracking your migraines gives you insight to when they happen? This comes from Kira. Um, so, yes. Um, tracking migraines is a much, much bigger question. Um, and if you... If you need a lot more stuff, I suggest the app Migraine Buddy, because um, there is a bajillion and different like one triggers that could possibly relate it to migraine. It, you know, sound, smells, lights, foods. Those are kind of the big ones. Um, uh, but no, it does give me a good idea of of when, like, if my medications are working or not. When I've taken stuff, um, some migraine meds, you have to not, you can't take them that often. Okay. Any of the triptans class, you cannot be taking like constantly. So you need to know when you took it. Um, and it, I think in, in terms of journaling, it gives me a much better indicator of what I was doing that week. Right. It reminds me not to be hard on myself that week because when I look back, I go, oh, I just had like six migraines days in a row. There was all these head pain days. So in it, Looking back, it's the, no, you can't expect yourself to be able to do tons of things that week. You know, it's okay to slow down when those things happen. So that's usually where I find it more useful in this case. But also, um, this is the same book I take to my doctor's appointments. Okay. Um, you probably noticed in the index, there are doctor's appointment notes all over the place in there. Um, and I, you know, this is how I go. This is how many I'm having. You know, this is kind of what they're looking like, you know, and, and having the data at the, at like right in your book is super fucking helpful. Um, you know, it, it really does make a difference when you can just be like, here's what they look like and go from there. Um, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll go back to the regular screen <laughs> so you can see what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, so the other week spread was just kind of something that was going to probably work more for school. Um, so the other big part um, that I'm going to talk about next is that now I've got this whole notebook. What do I do with it? Well, um, personal journaling. You know, you just write the date. Okay. Um, for me, that usually what's today's um, the 21. Today's a Thursday. Sometimes I put TH here. I don't have to, um, but I can. Um, so when we're using kind of the meat of the book, the other thing that bullet journaling has that's really nice is a cohesive set of symbols, okay? So I'm just going to flip to the back. I made myself this whole big sticker. It is also Stardew themed. All right. So... I do recommend following this. You could make your own and make your own key. That's perfectly fine too. Um, but I find that the way this is set up kind of makes some sense here, okay? So we've got a dash for notes. So just anything you're thinking about, some random stuff, cool. Events are a circle. Um, and that way at a glance you can go, shit, I know that I need to like schedule this and put this into other parts of the journal, make sure that it's something that I come back to. All right. Um, so tasks have a dot on them, okay? And that's pretty important. The dot's the easiest I find because when we, I'll get into migration in a few minutes, but when we deal with that, we might be crossing them off just to say that we did them. We might be migrating them, so putting them into the new month to be like, hey, I actually have to do this thing. Um, all right. This gator is pointing uh, towards the task scheduled, so maybe we need to put it in the future log instead. Um, we can cross it out when it is no longer relevant. Okay. And then I keep one here, a star for it to come back to. Um, so... All right, so the task for this is going to be, at least for right now, um, finish migrating to 
new book. Okay, and when I'm done with that, I can come back and X that off. Um, I, you know, my big important things that, like, I'm going to need for more than a day, they're going to go here. All right, so one thing that I know needs to go in for this month is going to be buy new tires. All right, we know that we need that. Um, and usually I've got both books out, but there's way too much identifying information in my other book, which is kind of how a bullet journal should be. Um, and so yeah, you can use these pages for whatever you want. If you want to doodle, do it. If you want to just draw, journal. Um, I find that journaling and just being able to write down my thoughts can be really helpful for when like I'm in PMDD and I I'm really stuck on a thing, but I can't deal with that thing right now. So I like to come back to my book, you know, and put a note about it. This thing is bothering me. If there's something, you know, we talked about house meetings. Um, the biggest thing that I put in my books is HM with colon. And then I write down the thing that I need to bring up for house meeting. Um, and that way I can quickly go through, see all the HMs in my book when we have meetings. Um... You know, I just picked that stuff out. So those are some of the helpful symbols that I've used. Um, I also just use a single letter for people's names. It's just faster. Um, I don't really bother writing them out fully unless I'm doing, like, longhand journaling, which, you know, I can do. Um, so the stage that I'm at right now with this book, the biggest thing I think that helps with the system is migration. Okay? And then it's this process of moving things to the new month, okay, so keeping track of what your tasks are, so you're going through stuff, you're going to be going through all the things that you're, like, that you're doing, keeping track of, um, that you want to do, okay, and you're going to look at that list and go, okay, what is, um, important to me, or, you know, important to the people around me, or my living, okay, so, you know, your bills might not be important to you, but no, they're still important to you, like, living and continuing to function, okay? Um, one quick note. I have posted a couple of examples of keys in links for stream. Oh yeah. Um, so on the items from my last book that I find, um, I can always raise this later. All right. So I have a bunch of these. All right. So when I go and look at them, I'm going to go, okay, is this something I still need to do? So in my November log, I'm going to put, this symbol point to the right, meaning that it's, you know, going to get migrated into the new month. All right. It's still going to be in here. If it's something that I want to put off for maybe later in the year, you're going to see this one. Okay. And this back arrow is, you know, visually speaking, pointing to the future log. And I will put it here. Um, if something has been done, I get an X. And then if something is no longer relevant, I run into a lot of those, they go here. Okay, and you will be rewriting all of the tasks from that month that you are going to keep. Okay, so you don't need any of your X's, you're crossed off. But the ones that you're going to rewrite will be in the new month. But Xena, I don't want to rewrite shit. Okay, we'll get shit done then. <laughs> that is literally the motivating factor here, okay? The dude that made this also had ADHD. And no, it turns into a pain in the ass, but you're like, okay, I should really make that blog post... But I haven't gotten to it in like three months. It's not that big of a deal. Maybe I should just cross it off finally and like take that stress off myself because you only have so much time in the day or in life. Jess is good at that philosophy too. Um, so that is part of the point. Um, and then also monthly, you can kind of go through, look at your journal, okay? Look at the things you've been writing. This is a good time for like self-reflection, kind of maybe piecing through stuff. Um, and just kind of noticing where you were at throughout the month. Um, and I think that self-reflection bit is probably one of the most important parts of bullet journaling. And no one really talks about that. Um, when I see videos, I usually just see the artsy side of it. And that's super fun. Like, I love art projects. Um, but going back and kind of going, okay, you know, what was working for me this month? How was I doing? You know, maybe there's things that might help me in the future, right? Or maybe, crap. I wrote that I was stressed about the dishes 10 times this month. Fuck. Uh, maybe, you know, that's something to look at. Um, 
So I think that's some of the bigger parts about this. Um, and then you can always just write, you know, your funsy pages too. If I have like eight videos ideas spread throughout my daily logs, I will take all of those and make a new page for my video ideas. Okay, and that way they're all organized in the same place. Helpful to do that occasionally. If I'm too busy to make a new page for them, I will just flip to my index and keep adding page numbers to the video log. Okay, that's that's about how I usually handle that. Um, so I think that's kind of the biggest parts of bullet journaling. Um, this is supposed to be a modular system, right? You can do whatever you need to with the book whenever you need to. If you need a spread that looks different, cool. If you need, you know, different tracking pages, cool. Um, yeah. So I'm coming up to kind of most of what I've got here. Most is going to be me having to go through the book on my own because I can't show all of the information in my book. Okay. Um, so before we start to wrap things up, just so people know, I put an example of the index in links for stream as well. Um, and if anyone wants any questions answered, now is the time. We might do another bullet general segment in the future, just kind of going over mm -hmm. like, what does a monthly migration look like? And that kind of stuff. Well, that's kind of what I talked about just now. Yeah, so but like, I just... you know, doing it with you guys or something like that, or maybe talking about like, what are the issues you've come around this, but not trauma dumping. Um, <laughs> so, uh, what, um, what questions do you have for Xena? And remember, one of the things that Zena said that was really important is that writing this out by hand, even if it's annoying for someone like me who has ADHD and also is left-handed and was assigned male at birth, holy shit, like, it actually really does change the level of memory, just as a side note. No, I think that's a big one, too, um, is that you will key things into your memory much, much, much better by handwriting it. Typing things out, putting things in on your phone does not do the same as as physically handwriting it out. I don't know quite why that is, but that is what our science data says. Um, so I think Kira mentioned, um, you know, I've got a digital calendar, but it doesn't keep everything that a bullet journal does. Still thinking this through. Um, um, Tiamat asked. Do you mm -hmm. think it would be more helpful to use smaller time frames, specifically in regards to memory and or unprompted recollection during the day? So some people will do, I know, like they will check in at the end of every day with themselves and check in with their journal. And that can be really, really helpful for a short time frame. Um, but if a monthly log is too big for you, or maybe you just don't have a ton of stuff to put there, yeah, you could do a weekly log. Like I said, our kid's a student, and they're going to do, you know, two weeks at a time in their book. Um, and that will be helpful for them. So I think you just got to sit down and be like, okay, what amount of information can I handle all at once? Okay, what do I need to see, you know, to kind of organize my life all together in that moment? Okay, our next question is from Rosanna. How do you make it? I assume the question here is aesthetically pleasing. It just says <laughs> aesthetic sparkle. <laughs> okay. This is my gripe with, with bullet journaling. I want you to know that this is the most aesthetics I'm going to be doing. But you are, well, I also do in fact have highlighters. Okay. The mild liners from uh, Zebra. Apparently I'm doing an art vlog now. Are pretty great. Uh, I got them at my local... Uh, Costco, and uh, they had a big box of them. I actually have this whole pouch. Um, and they make me happy. Uh, also can use stickers. You can use stickers! By the way, this artist is on Etsy. You want to flip it upside down so you can draw it right back. This one's on Etsy. I have a bunch of these, actually. I do, in fact, have, like, my sticker collection. Um... Yeah, Matt clarified, I'm talking more in terms of a tendency to not remember during the day what I was intending to do this week, or just kind of get lost in one activity and forget to catch another. At least for me as somebody with ADHD, my response to that would be, and this is just speaking by the way, my response to that would be is, is that I would make sure if something comes up that you remember you were supposed to do, immediately put it in the journal. The other thing I would sort of add is, is that, um, 
sit down occasionally throughout the day and just if something pops up or there's an idea, kind of add it to the list. Another thing you could do is set up a ritual at night where let's say you sit down at night after you've made all these notes in your phone and you then transcribe those notes for things to do in into your bullet journal. So now you've wrote, written them down, you've maybe used your phone on the go, and that way you can make sure that all that stuff gets remembered. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And this is something that I keep with me throughout the day, too. Um, it's usually not too far away from me. Um, I'm also not going around that big of a house, but... Um, yeah. Uh, so aesthetics. Um, Rosanna, you can make this as artsy as you want. That's the idea here. Uh, my thing actually looks like a mess. There are arrows everywhere. Um, you can see this first index where I added highlight, where I got the highlighters. And I was like, oh, I can highlight different section notes to different places in the journal. Cool. Um, I have a few, I don't know, I've got maybe an art page or two in here. Um, do, 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 are there pages that are safe? Um, maybe. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's, yeah, mine's not like the most pretty, but again, you don't have to be pretty with this. This is meant to be functional for you. If it makes you happy to put, you know, to, to decorate the titles and everything cool. If not, that's fine too. Yeah, Tiamat, I, I, I get you're being smarmy, but, like, the reality is is that part of this is you're training the brain to do something that it's not quite good at if you have ADHD. Um, executive function's a bitch. So one of the things you're going to have to do is maybe use Google Keep. If you want to gamify it, you could use Habitica. Um, but that way you just have a place to put down notes of things I've got to do this week and then transfer them over. Yeah. Yeah, because again, I think especially with ADHD brains, the big part is coming back to things, slowing down, you know, and kind of piecing through that. This is your kind of your time to go, okay, what's actually like, what do I actually need from all of these thoughts? Your your brain's really good at like spider webbing and giving you 10,000 things. But the goal here is to take that and kind of start learning how to narrow that down into the important stuff, right? Because you got to go, okay, should I put my time into these 10 different things? That might be way too much. So you're going to kind of practice narrowing it down. And that's where kind of just checking in with this a lot can help. Yeah. Um, Sin, uh, uh, Sin says, also, you mentioned dot type almost graph paper. Can you post that as a reference somewhere? Yeah, we can post that links for stream. Or if someone wants to look it up for a craft site, just post it in the stream. Yeah, you can find what's called dot grid. Um, Um, local craft stores will have these notebooks. You can get them online. Um, you know. Tia, Matt, you're not that much of a Luddite. You're literally on Discord. Stop it. <laughs> I think Kira did bring up a good, a interesting question about having a digital calendar with, you know, a bullet journal. And certainly, like, our house will, we have a house calendar that we have to keep between all of us. So we do have to remember to log things on you know, the house calendar, particularly stuff that like, no, other people need to know that I'm going to be gone all day and they need to take the buns out for me. Um, so there are uses for that. And if you really need like extra reminders throughout the day, no, like a phone app that dings at you to do something, that might be a tool to use in conjunction with this. sense um so i don't see any more questions um one person did give the suggestion that you could theoretically use a um drawing tablet with a stylus uh this person says uh, helen says i use handwriting recognition but handwrite everything so that would technically work as long as it's accessible to you and easily grabbable yeah so um, if you have a tablet for example with that you could do that if it's a larger drawing tablet that's probably less effective Um, so this is my, this is my rocket book. Um, it's got a QR code. 
if you're just new with bullet journaling, I still suggest going with the paper first because it is a lot easier to go back to your index than it is to sort through like all of this text on a screen. Okay, these will save in separate files when I scan them in. Um, and it's just easier to go back visually with a notebook. So this isn't my favorite for bullet journaling in and of itself, but I do go between all of these. That's why I have a separate index for them sometimes. You know, when I take notes for the house, no, I use the bullet journal because I have to distribute those notes to three people. Um, let me see if you can see the dot grid on one of these. Um, honestly, these guys got me through school. They're, they're great. I really love them. These are also... Um, so they're faint. I don't know if people can see that. It's very hard to see. That that's that works very poorly with the screen. Yeah. But it also It does have faint lines on it, but apparently whatever it's made out of just doesn't show up on screen right. No, well it's not supposed to, frankly. Like when the camera picks it up, you don't really notice that all the lines are there. Um that's kind of the goal. Do I ever use bullet journal apps? Nah. I really don't. I know there's a few that I think like Panda or one of the other planners can go online, but Again, when you start adding in multiple screens, multiple like headers for data, it starts to get really hard to find where things are at, especially because I'll go through and I will visually like highlight the important parts. Um, maybe the part that I added to my index was down here in the center. I just needed this, you know, a list that was down here. I don't need the whole page. Real quick, wanted to add something. Danger Fairy mm -hmm. said, girl has to have light text on dark, preferably golden rod on black. That's why apps are better than paper. I still disagree. Apps are still garbage compared to doing it act by manual paper. That's what the data shows us. That's what the research shows us. Writing it out actually does way more than apps. Um, if you really like that style, though, you can find or make a notebook that is entirely black paper and use, like, paint pens or other you, things like that that will um, actually let you use those colors. Oh, yeah, yeah. I I have seen on Amazon a few black journals just... Don't ever forget your pens. Um, because I do have some white uh, jelly rolls. You know, I use these on black I eat all the time. Um, so I think the only other thing we're, worth noting, I think, is just for our relationship, bullet journaling has been pretty cool. Um, should you back to me in camera? Yeah. Yeah, should this back to me in camera, so... Um, just, I know for, for Jess and I being able to sit down, um, and plan stuff out, this really helps. We'll, we'll sit down with our weekend and we will sometimes, sometimes I will have a massive list of shit I want to get done and then we have to pare it down. Okay. <laughs> Jess can tell you I'm really good at having all the things in my brain, but paring it down is harder. Um, you know, this is how we plan different things for our life. We'll put, like, relationship goals down. And it is a good time to just kind of check in with each other, too. So I think I've really liked it for our relationship a lot. Um, even, you know, and, and yeah, I think one of our relationship goals with, like, ADHD is that I do help take notes for things. I do help, um, you know, if we're in, like, a doctor's appointment, I will help write down stuff. Um, and that way that information is still there, still important. Um, so... You got anything you want to add or? No, I'm feeling like done. Yeah, is there any other last minute questions? We will give you guys a couple minutes. Um, yeah, I've done the stack of three by five cards. Uh, Weaver was saying, keep everything that's been assigned for school on three by five cards that live on my desk. Haven't tried adding other stuff to it yet. Um, Danger Fairy, I realize that you, you say that, but that's literally not how the data works. Um, I, I You're welcome to use whatever you like, and if that works for you, that's great. I'm not going to tell anyone, like, rigidly they have to do anything. But, again, we're talking about just the empirical research and what works best as far as all the data we have. So, again, not saying people can't do anything that they want. It's simply saying that this is the best and most effective system we know about. Um, and to do what you want. Writing. No one's trying to push anyone to use a system they don't want. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's a question of different. I think it's just a question of people get set in their ways to what things they like and what things work well for them. 
And I'm a big fan of breaking habits, so that that's where I come from on this. So, as a side yeah. note. All right, so you want to send this out? Yeah. Oh, um, so a couple of resources. Um, how to ADHD, the channel, okay? She's got two videos on bullet journaling, and they're amazing, okay? And especially if you have ADHD, go watch those. Even if you don't have ADHD, go watch them, okay? She goes with them to a lot of different tips and tricks, a lot of ways to kind of get set up with this, to kind of get the habit, you know, going. She's super good at it. Also, she has a video setting it up, too. So if you're like, hey, I need a little bit more help, watch a couple videos. Um, any advice for those who are insecure about their own handwriting? This is your journal. No one's got to see it but you. I'm going to be honest. Um, with a lot of my chronic illness stuff, my handwriting does degrade occasionally. Um, my journals from here, I was from the one that I started at the beginning of the year to, you know, even just the one that I'm coming from have gotten so much messier. Um, a lot of times, you know, my handwriting's big, it's large, it's squiggly, it's not all the letters are formed, and that's just how it's going to be. Um, when you're dealing with this level of chronic illness, it's okay. Um, if your, your handwriting doesn't have to be pretty, again, this is for you. All you. So. Um. Are there any, any more questions from YouTube? Nope, I think we're good. Any other questions you can easily post inside, um, you can just post inside, uh, the, the newcomer chat and, uh, other than um, that. YouTube comments. We'll definitely be checking YouTube comments. So if you've got any in there, let us know. Um, so yeah, thanks for hanging out and going through the new journal process. I will try and update you all as I go through migrating the new book. Um, so yeah, that's about everything. All right. Bye, everyone. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. You can also ring the bell if you want to be notified of our videos. Um, if you want to help the channel, you can donate at streamlabs.com slash transgirltherapist slash tip. You also can uh, become a patron at patreon.com slash transgirltherapist. As low as $3, you can support our channel. Thanks for watching.